You ready? Yep. Okay. Okay, it's been a while since we've had question and answer time. Um, just, uh, I don't know, just been busy. Um, uh, we did a couple of films, did a TV show. I had an injury to my to my toe. Uh, then I ha now I've got an injury to my knee. Uh, but that's okay. We everything's getting fixed. Toe's fine now. Uh, the knee. I'm having a little procedure on it tomorrow. No, what's today? Friday. Well, Friday. Uh, and so I'll be fine. And uh, and so it, I don't know. Time just slipped away. And and, um, and and there was a, just some, I was afraid I would say something that I didn't want to also. So anyway, we'll start with the first question. What are the chances of ever doing another show with an orchestra? Uh, oh, before we say that, the TV show is called Fairly Legal. So if you get it, I saw a little bit of it at ADR, which is like when you go and... They had me scream in a scene, and the sound man wasn't ready, and it distorted because I'm so loud. And uh, Paul Crook uh, has said uh, that standing next to me in the studio while I'm singing is, uh, he has to wear earplugs because it's deafening. So anyway, I'm loud, and so I had to redo the screaming part of all things because it was distorted. The sound man wasn't ready. Okay, uh, now back to the first question. What are the chances of ever doing another show with an orchestra? I, I, can, I can answer that. Uh, right now, nobody's brought it up, but I could finish answering this question, and in an hour from now, the phone will ring and say, um, hey, I got this great idea. What does it mean love to do a show with an orchestra? And I would go, okay. It sounds like fun. So anyway, you never know. Um, okay, wait a minute. this is an interesting. When you point and mouth words at the audience <laughs> at your shows before you start rocking, what are you saying? <laughs> well, I can't tell you that because that's my secret. Um, I can I, I, I can partly tell you. Part of them is, uh, you're mine, you belong to me. Because that's how I feel. Whenever you, um, if, if you go in for an audition for a film, or you step on a stage, or you step on a movie set, or you're on a TV set, uh, on a, doing a, you know, filming, Whatever you do as an entertainer, you have to own the... You can't just own the stage. You have to own the room. So, I take command of not just the stage, but the entire room. So, I say a lot of stuff to you. But that's a couple of them. <laughs> My children wanted me to ask you this. Which Teletubby is your favorite? I have no idea. It was just this really insane idea that I had uh, for the Australian show is to have a rave and uh, people were going to the rave and and I had three guys dressed as Teletubbies that went to the rave. That's what that was. It was a rave. I had a girl that was dressed as Jenny, Luke, uh, who was dressed as Alice and uh, a girl named Kelly Jan Johnson who was dressed as the rabbit, as a rabbit from Alice in Wonderland. Because I, I, I think raves are kind of like going to Alice in Wonderland. It's like going, shrinking yourself into a little tiny hole and falling down and, and running into the Cheshire Cat. Uh, that's kind of how I look at raves because people at raves, they just, I love you so much. I love you, oh, you, I love you. So anyway, that's, that's kind of, that was kind of my inside joke. My eight-year-old Abby would like to know if you've ever petted a bat. Uh, no, I can't say that I've petted a bat. Uh, my question back to you, has your eight-year-old Abby painted, pe petted a bat? Um, I, I pull one out of someone's hair once because bats like to get fly into people's hair. And uh, I was totally freaked out. 
These are little bats aren't very big. Well, some of them are huge. Fruit bats down in Australia are gigantic. But this, is, it was a little bat, but it was in this hair and and it was a woman and she was absolutely hysterical. And and to get her to hold still, just to get the thing out was like, it wasn't something I was looking forward to. Will you be doing any music videos for songs from Hell in a Handbasket? Um, we're doing some videos for the for the live show, but as far as a, um, a video goes for Hell in a Handbasket, we don't have any plans for that. Uh, how was it working with Tim Curry on Rocky Horror Show? I love Tim Curry. I um, the working with him on stage um, was a remarkable experience. I learned so much. Um, uh, from him working on that stage much I'll have to say more than ever about working on on Broadway and doing hair or or uh, I, I learned a lot from doing working with Ron Silver and Steve Collins and Mary Beth Hurt and down at uh, Public Theater and from Jimmy with Jimmy um, and uh, and Shakespeare's a weird the Shakespeare's are weird so uh, they're, they're a whole nother deal but Tim he would uh, I played Dr. Scott in the play and Tim would come out and his first line was well Dr. Scott we meet at last and he would say it every different way in the world one night he'd be angry one night he'd be laughing one night he'd be coy one night he would be you know, I, it just went on and on and on. And and he did it the first three nights of the play, basically the same way. And all of a sudden, I wheel out in my wheelchair as Dr. Scott, and he says it's some, a completely different way. And I have no idea how long the pause was. But it, my instinct was, if I say the line the way I've said it the last three nights, I'm going to seem like a fool. So I had to adapt and say my line differently because of how he started the scene. And, and that was the real introduction right there that night to about how to make acting real. I had understood it from taking lessons, but that was, that was the work experience. That's why you can go to school and learn anything you want, but until you're actually doing it, you don't know anything. And that was uh, that fourth show of Rocky Horror, Tim Curry, uh, a huge lesson, a lesson uh, I'll never forget, and still comes into play every day. And I love Tim, by the way. I know you love getting out there with your fans, but at this point in your career, have you ever considered doing a regular gig in Las Vegas or some other similar type of venue? Yes, they talk to me about it all the time. But I have, um, and people almost, and you get these weird comments, he's chewing gum. I have chewed gum in every performance I've ever sung, starting in high school, in the concert choir, because I have dry mouth. It's just a thing. It's just continual. And like down in Australia, I had no idea that Australia was actually drier, the whole country. And you'd think, you know, you're sitting by an ocean that it wouldn't be dry. Australia is actually drier, the whole country, than it is in Vegas. So that was tough. And the older you get, I think you just get drier. I don't know if that's true or not. I have no medical... Uh, uh, anything to back that up it's just something I think so yeah they talk to me I, I swear once a month about doing something in Vegas but I would have to go live there for six or seven months prior to uh, doing anything we have great ideas Patty and I have unbelievable ideas uh, uh, Paul Crook has we have unbelievable ideas uh, for putting up a show in Vegas um, so that that's not out of the question. We just it, it's just we're I'm always constantly doing something else. It's like uh, you know 
I get movie offers and we turn them down and sometimes we take them. Um, we're touring in June and then we have a break and I think I'm doing a movie during the break, which I, I'm supposed to be resting during the break, but I think I'm going to do a movie uh, called Moonbeam. And uh, then we go back out on tour and then I will take, then, oh no, then somebody called with another offer for August during the break. So I'll probably shoot that as well. And then, uh, then we go to September the second, and then then somebody will probably make me another offer because I can't, I can't say no, and I can't stop working. And I'm with Paul Brown, who ha has done several videos for us, and has did the album cover for Ankle, uh, for uh, well, Hell in a Handbasket, all the in interiors for Hankel Teddy Bear, all the interiors for Hell in a Handbasket, has asked me to do. A movie that he's shooting, so I'm going to do a day with him on May 19th. Okay, another one. Would you rather be trapped in a room with a hungry bear or a hungry lion? And how would you survive? All you have is a red handkerchief, a guitar, and a wire bra, underwear bra. Well, first of all, you have a much better chance being in a room with a hungry bear than you do with a hungry lion. Um... Uh, a lion, I don't think you got a snowball's hell in chance of surviving. Uh, uh, bears get a little more frightened than lions. Lions, if you, if you get aggressive with a lion, they will get aggressive back. Bears, uh, from what I understand, if you get aggressive with a bear, they tend to sometimes go, I don't think so. So... You th what you do is you throw the red handkerchief over the bear's eyes, hit him upside the head with the guitar, and you put on the underwire bra so he's totally confused about what's going on, and he runs away. There you go. Uh, you mentioned you're a fan of Jimmy Barnes. Uh, what's your favorite uh, Jimmy Barnes song? A song that Jimmy Barnes did, oh, God, I don't... In the 90s, it's called Kathleen, and... Uh, uh, absolutely love that song. I have every, uh, I'm the only American with every Jimmy Barnes album. Uh, but uh, there was, he did a song, uh, Kathleen, which uh, anytime I hear it, I, I melt. Any plans on doing a South American tour, Argentina, Brazil, Peru, or Chile? Uh, all of those countries we find, just not Venezuela. And nothing personal against the people in Venezuela. Just, um, just not at this time, not in Venezuela. Um, after, you've done, oh, after you've done the kill, for those people who don't know what the kill is, we started doing, uh, in 1984, we started doing, and we've done it every show, the Leno show, every TV show, every show, we've, anything we've ever done where we've gone to perform, at the Leno show, we did it softly, so because he was on the air, and so we had to go kill. And uh, um, and it says, well, the kill is. What is it? How does it go? What do we do? Kill. What do we always do? Kill. What are we gonna do? Kill. What do big dogs do? Kill. Actually, it should be what do hungry lions do? Kill. Uh, but. Um, after you're doing the kill, what goes through your mind? Um, nothing goes through my mind. I have already gone through the process of going into the zone. I've already, it's like a football. I've already beaten my head against the locker. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just, and if there's any time, the only thing I'm doing back there is stretching my legs a little bit more, making sure that uh, uh, that my legs are the muscles in my legs are as loose as possible, and uh, and I'm I, I'm I'm really not thinking anything. I'm thinking <laughs> I'm I'm coming after you. That's what I'm thinking. Um, ah, uh, here's a question: What do you do with your old stage clothes? Do you sell them? Auction them? Give them away to charity, keep them, throw them away. Well, we give some away to charity, which we've done. Uh, most of them I've kept. 
Uh, some of them are useless because I've worn them, I wear them out pretty quick on stage. So those kind of get thrown away. Especially the pants that split on TV in Germany in 1981. And I didn't know they were split. But right now, as you bring up the auction, yes, um, I've uh, given uh, I don't know, four or five guitars, some Marshall amps, clothes, uh, my piano, a whole bunch of stuff uh, to an auction that's going to take place in June. The one thing that I didn't give them was Eddie's vest from Rocky Horror. Um, I still have that. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame wanted it. The Smithsonian wanted it. Um, I have that. Um, once uh, I'm no longer on this earth, my wife and my daughters can figure out what they want to do with, with Eddie's jacket. But right now, Eddie's jacket stays with me. I almost wore it on stage, but they talked me out of it. Okay, on the official video of Kiss is a Terrible Thing to Waste, which is uh, Storytellers, at 3 minutes and 30 seconds into the video, you grab a helmet and place it on your head for a few seconds. Why did you do that? Why do I do anything? I, I, nothing is ever planned with me. Um, what happens on stage is never planned. Um, what I say to the audience is never planned. And that was at, um, that was Storytellers. And I wanted to create a locker room environment for Storytellers because that's how I feel about what happens when we go on the stage. I go on stage and I'm playing in a football game. That's the, that's the, that's how, that's the focus and the energy and, and the drive. It, it, that's what drives me. I don't want that. I play defense, so I don't want that halfback coming through my hole and making any yardage whatsoever. And so that's, I know if, that's probably crazy, but there was a helmet sitting next to me, I think it was an instrumental, and I put it on because it's like playing a football game. So I just, I don't know why other than it was there. Okay, why was John Rich replaced with Trace Atkins for the US version of Stand in the Storm? When we originally cut the track for Stand in the Storm, uh, for Celebrity Apprentice, which we had on iTunes and they were supposed to talk about it at the finale and they didn't do and I'm upset about it. And we had the front page of iTunes for it. We could have made, just with the mention of allowing me to talk about the fact that John, Lil John and Mark had, we had all done this song, we could have raised more money for the charity. And as far as I was concerned, that's what the show was about. I know all these people go, oh, you go on to be... Hey, you know what? I, I got to tell you, folks. I, I didn't go on because I thought that Celebrity Apprentice was going to help my career. I hadn't done anything for me. The only thing that's done for me is people think that I have a terrible temper, which is not the case at all. And uh, you can talk to some 60-odd peop 60 60-odd productions now that I've done between film and television, and they'll tell you they've never seen me angry. Uh, the band, yeah, they've seen me angry a couple of times, mostly at myself, uh, because I didn't do, I didn't do things that like I wanted them to go. But very rarely will I ever get mad at any other band member. There's, there's been three times in, okay, I take it back, four times in 46 years that I can remember getting angry at a band member. Um, uh, I, I and and the way they edited that, uh, me yelling at Gary Busey was not the way it went down, and uh, so uh, anyway, we changed the key was too low. We the key was too low for me, so I raised the key two steps, and uh, John Rich was unable to get the vocal on in time and Trace was right there and could do it. So I got Trace to do it. And that's the only reason John Ritchie just, he wasn't available to get in the studio to redo 
because we were on a really tight deadline. I mean, we had like three days. And uh, it was nothing against John Rich, trust me. Um, uh, and I felt bad, but there was nothing I could do. And we were under a time crunch, and I wanted to stand in the storm. And they both did a fantastic job, and I love both of them for it. And I, I say thank you to both. And I really like what Trace did at the end. There's a storm coming. Um, what helps you de-stress after a hard day? Um, okay. Um, I'm always stressed, but I play, actually, I play two games. I play the, I, well, I play more than two. I, I play uh, fantasy football, fantasy basketball, fantasy baseball. I don't do fantasy hockey because I don't get it. I know Wayne Gretzky, but I don't get hockey. Um, uh, I, I don't under, I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't, I understand they're on skates, they got a stick, they got a puck. Um, it's so, I understand, uh, English footballs more than I understand hockey. I understand cricket more than I understand hockey. Now that's going out there, but hockey, they, I watch a hockey game and they call some guy off sides. Or icing, and I have, I, I go, ah, 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 what? And um, I, I don't get it. So I play everything but that, and I also play a game called Battle Night, and I have four different nights on Battle Night, and I play a game called, oh, what, I, Gladius, um, where, and I have two of those where I have two gladiators, and my, um, my uh, name <laughs> on the on the site is uh, maybe I shouldn't tell you. I get some weird emails, yeah. so I won't tell you the name. But anyway, I'm on there. Uh, so that's what I do. I but but actually the fantasy basketball because we're in the playoffs is stressing me out because I've lost three of my starters to injuries in the final week of the final playoff, and I won the first half of the playoffs hands down just destroyed them and three of my major players have gone down I mean I lost uh, a rebounder which he was getting 14 17 rebounds a night two major scorers that were you know averaging 25 points a game and it's a really close match it's going to go down to the last day uh, he's ahead of me five points to three at the moment. I'm behind him 27 points and 17 rebounds. So it's going to go down to the last day. All I got to do is tie 4-4 to win it. So it's going down to the last day. Would I, and will I ever work with Hugh Laurie again? Uh, absolutely. Hugh Laurie is absolutely brilliant. Not only is, is, is he a... Um, uh, has... Um, Oh, oh, cut. 